read Psalm 136, verse 1 to 4. That's the first part of the Thanksgiving prayer. It reads, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercies endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercies endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercies endures forever. So I want us to lift up our voice and thank this God, because he is good because he's the God of gods, the Lord of laws, and also him alone does great wonders. I want us to reflect on how far he has brought us as an individual, as a family, as a church, as a ministry, and let us thank him because his mercy endures forever. Pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks. We worship you, Lord. He can see that burden. You are the God of God, you are the Lord of Lords. You alone does wonders, great wonders, Lord. We've come to thank you for how far you've brought us as an individual, as a family, as a ministry. Lord, we've come to thank you. We lift up our voice to thank you. You've done so much for us, we cannot tell it all. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we worship you. Kalida da pasi de di kasida. Lord, we give you thanks. I kalida ba kasida. I kasida de de de. Kalida da we worship you, Abba Father. We can't thank you enough. I kalida di ba kasida. I de 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 ba kasida. For everything you God have done, we've come to give you thanks. We've come to return all glory to you. You've done so much for us, Lord. We cannot tell it all, Lord. Accept us, accept our thanksgiving. thank you thank you Amen. We are still going to be thanking God, and I want to read another scripture. I want to read some one thirty six. I want to read from verse 23 to 26. And it reads, Who remembers us in our lowly state, for his mercy endures forever, and rescued us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. So for these things he has done for us, as scripture has stated it, I want us to still thank him. He remembered us even when we are in our low state. He rescued us from our enemies. In fact, there are some battles God gave us victory that we are not aware of. That's how gracious he is. 
and he gives food to all flesh. Let us give thanks to the God of heaven. So with this heart full of things, I want us to raise our voice again and thank this great God. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord. You remember us in our holy state. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are still praying. We are still praying. And I want us to take the next prayer. We are going to be praying the prayer of mercy. We are going to be taking the next prayer from Psalms, from the book of Psalm 102, verse 13. Psalm 102, verse 13. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. So we'll put our name there. You, you will arise and have mercy on us because the time to favor us. Yes, the set time has come. So I want us to lift our voice to the God of heaven and cry out for mercy even at this time. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Ibakasi <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. We are still praying. I want us to take the next prayer. We're going to be praying about trusting God completely. I've come to realize that um, to work with God, we want us to trust Him blindly, even when one does not appear to know what the next plan is. And it takes the help of God to trust Him wholly, to trust Him completely. The scriptures reads in Proverbs 28, verse 25, 28, 25. He who is of a proud heart tears up strife, but he who trusts in the Lord will be prospered. This is a good reason why we need to trust him wholly. Also, Proverbs 29, 25 reads, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. I want us to raise our voice and pray that the Lord should help us to trust Him only, to trust Him completely, so that these blessings in the Scripture for us to be prospered and to be saved will be a testimony. Let's raise our voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord. Trust Him only. In every aspect of life, and as your father said it, you trust you with the prosper. This is we as reality in the name of Jesus. Rock <laughs> 
In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. So the theme for the month is restoration of lost time. And I want us to take the next prayer on restoration. Uh, and I just want to take the prayer from Psalms 80 verse 3. I want us to cry even as the scripture reads. Restore us, O God. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. So I want this to, I want us to turn this to a prayer that the Lord should restore us and his face should, should cause his face to shine on us so that we will be saved even in this season of restoration. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Lord, restore us, Lord. Restore us, Lord. Lord. Cause your face to shine upon us, Lord. We shall be in this season of restoration. She <laughs> Amen. Just before I hand over, I want us to pray for the vessel the Lord has prepared today. That the Lord will speak through him. That even us that we will be receiving, our hearts will be open. And the word of God will be fruitful in our lives. We take root downwards and bear fruit upwards. In the name of Jesus, let's raise our voice and pray in Jesus' name. Okay, <laughs> Amen. Over to Mr. Stephen. Uh, thank you so much, Ma, for that incredible session. Uh, we're just going to still uh, be in that place of prayer, that mode of prayer. And uh, 
the Lord has just placed in my heart. The first thing that we just need to do at this particular point um, is uh, just to pray from the book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12 where it reads, return to your fortress or prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I just want us to just pray from that from that angle that God is giving you an assurance that he is going to restore you twice as much than what you had in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, you have labored in hope. You have been trusting in the Lord for the thing that you've been waiting for. You know, whether it is restoration of your family, restoration of your finance, whatever type of restoration that is, God is saying return to your fortress or prisoners of hope even now i announce that i'll restore twice as much to you yes remember that the theme for the year is divine restoration there are those that have been waiting for month one to up to now month six and you're wondering you know it's going now to the other half of the year and god is just saying return to your fortress or prisoners of hope you, even now i announce that i'll restore twice as much to you god is not a respecter he's not a respecter of time you know god god will still do it in the mighty name of jesus he will still do it even even at this particular point where you're thinking yes it's half of the year and and, and I've not seen anything yet, but God is saying, return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce, I, announce, I announce that I'll restore twice as much to you. So we're just going to pray from that angle, and we're just going to thank the Lord. God, I thank you that even at this particular point, God, you are still working. The fact that he's telling you to go back to uh, b- back to the fortress, he's, it's an indication that he's, he's, he's in the process of ensuring that you get that restoration twice as much than what you had in the mighty name of Jesus. So do not lose hope. Even when we are in this month, in this sixth month, and you are expecting the restoration to be to have happened either on the first month or on the second month or whatever time you are expecting, and you're looking at that time and you're thinking that that time has lapsed. Mm-mm. God is just saying, return to your fortress of prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce twice as much. I will restore twice as much than what you have. So we're just going to thank the Lord in that regard. His word is still alive and it is still alive active. He will be able to restore twice as much in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's just begin to pray and give thanks in that regard that God is telling me to go back in the name of Rakaya Thank you, Father God, that God, 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 you have spoken to me, God. You have said that, God, you are restoring me twice as much. You are restoring my health twice as much. You are restoring my finances twice as much. You are restoring my salvation twice as much. Where I experience shame, oh God, you are granting me a double portion. Oh, Rakosa Kataya, where I experience disgrace, oh Father God, you are granting me a double portion. I will surely enjoy my inheritance. Oh, Rakosa Kataraboa, Rakosa Kataraboa, Rakosa Kataraboa, Rekayama Sheketeneboa, Rakosa Kataraboa, oh Rabashete Reboshaya. I receive, oh God, I thank you, God. I receive of God the restoration. I receive of Father God the double portion of God. Oh, Rakosaya, as I wait upon you, oh God, and the Reboshaya. I thank you, God, for that word because your word is active. Your word, Almighty Father God, shall come to fruition in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rakosa Katarabosha, Rakosa Katarabosha, Rakayama Seket and Emosaya, Rakayama. Shake it to the Bosha, Rosoko 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Still in the same breath. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 13, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end, the eternal one. You know, we normally emphasize so much about the Alpha. We know that he's the beginning. He's the one who is the creator of the universe. But most of the time, we don't focus so much about the Omega, about him being the end. He brings things to the end. He brings the years that the cankerworms had eaten to the end. He he, 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 he ensures that he brings the end of the weeping that has endured in the night so that he ushers you into that form of joy that comes in the morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, he's the one who brings the end, the years. He brings those, this, those years of slavery to the end and he ushers you to that those years of freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. He's the God who even can end the years of frustration and he begins to gift you with years of longevity. We saw that with Job. We saw that with Job when Job was in that state of frustration, in that state of suffering, God increased his years in the mighty name of Jesus. He was able to see his children, his grandchildren, his great grandchildren in the mighty name of Jesus. And the beauty of it is that, you know what, his sight was still strong, like he was still strong in the mighty name of Jesus. So God can even do that for you in the mighty name of Jesus. He's the omega at this particular point. There are things that you have gone through for so long and God is saying, you know what i will end those free those frustrations and i will introduce you to that season whereby now where, where you experience such a lost time i am ushering you into now a new season whereby i'm prolonging your season i'm prolonging that season of joy in the mighty name of jesus so we are just going to worship the lord who in the mighty name of jesus from that angle he's the god who brings those things to an end those years that you have lost to an end and is ushering you to a new season in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's just begin to worship the Lord in that regard. Rakaya bosoko tere ba she tere bosaya rikaya bosoko taya ora kose ke tere bosaya. Thank you, Father God, for you being our Omega God, bringing to an end the years of God that we lost in the hands of the enemy of God. Ora kosa ya bo, rokose ke tere bosaya, rakosa bosa kataya, rakosa bosa kataya, rakosa bosa kataya, rokose ke tere bosia. Thank you, God, for bringing the years of the canker up to an end. Thank you, Father God, for bringing Almighty Father God. Oh, Rakosayabo, the seasons of Almighty Father God. Oh, Ramashetaya, oh, the seasons of mourning. Almighty Father God, you're bringing them to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Rakayabo Shetaya, you are ushering me into a new season that Father God that Father God is filled with longevity that I will testify God of the things that you have for me almighty Father God Hallelujah, Rabosha de Reboshaya, Roko Sekete Reboshaya, Rakayabo Sekete Rebo, Rakayabo Sekete Rebo, Rakayabo Sekete Rebo, Roko Sakata Raboshaya. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And you know what? Even, even at this particular point when God is saying, I'm going to restore the years that the canker worms had eaten, I'm going to restore those lost, the, I mean, the time that you've lost. It is very pivotal for us to observe Psalm chapter 90, verse 12, where it says, teach us to number our days that we may cultivate and bring to you a heart of, uh, to you a heart of wisdom. So even yeah. at this particular point, since God is merciful, we are going to ask God, Father, may you grant us wisdom. Father, may you teach us how to number our days. Father God, help us, oh God, not to wander the way we were wandering around, almighty Father God. And that was what was even affecting us, and we lost so much time. So we are going to ask God, Father, may you just teach us, almighty Father God, through your wisdom, oh God, how to number our days in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take that prayer point in the name of Jesus. Rokusa katara basheketi reboshaya. Rakosa katere basheketi reboshaya. Rakosa basheketi reboshaya. Ribusa katara boshetaya. Father God, teach us, my God. Teach us, my God, to number our days. Teach us, Almighty Father God, riba sheketi rebo. To put our days in order, Almighty Father God. Teach us, oh God, Father God, to be sensitive. Rakosa katara boshaya. Rokosa katara boshaya. You have been merciful, O oh God, to restore the time lost, O oh God. Father God, we pray, O oh God, that yeah, Father yeah. God, you will grant us the wisdom. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence in this meeting. We consecrate this time of fellowship before you, O oh God, that you would have the preeminence. Let Jesus be glorified. I arrest every distracting spirit. I arrest every antichrist spirit. Replace them underneath the feet of Jesus. Father, we ask that your presence will saturate the atmosphere. Have your way in this meeting. Let there be miracles in this meeting. Let there be restoration in this meeting. We release the ministry of angels to minister to your people, for your word says they are all ministering spirits. Then forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege to gather in your presence. Let hearts be open. Anoint my tongue to speak words that are spirit and life to your people. Help them understand and receive it. Let these words take root downwards and produce fruit upwards. Let the truth of your word let it come into the hearts of your people. Oh, we thank you, Father, for answered prayers. For in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Guys, you are welcome to today's session. The restoration of lost time. Thank you, Stephen, for that powerful time in God's presence. 
I want to take time to remind us quickly that um, when we gather like this, we are here to pray, spend time in God's presence. You will not be able to touch God until you begin to spend time in His presence. Open your mouth to pray so that you can be saturated and filled. Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. You have to drink first. You have to drink first before rivers can flow out of you. And one of the ways we drink is by opening our mouth in prayer to join the incense arising towards heaven. You can't go wrong. And I've taken time to explain this thing a few times in the past, but as we began to progress and grow, um, I think what happened was we stopped mentioning it. You see, when you join an altar, the significance of it and the reason why the scriptures would tell us to not forsake the gathering of the brethren it's because there is something that happens that you can't see or you don't see. You don't see it. People curry favor with the king on a different basis, different kinds of reasons. There are some people on this altar that the favor that they have with God is as a result of generational service. Those whom their forefathers served God, their grandfathers served God, their fathers served God, they are serving God. It's a kind of favor you would have with God based on that. <laughs> it's a kind of favor you would have with God. Believe you me. There are some that because of the covenants God has with them, they, they have a different kind of favor with God. This favor that they have with God is, um, is as a result of a very unique covenant that God has with them. That God has with them. There are some others that they kept themselves for God. That becomes the basis through which they have favor with the king. I've seen these things I'm talking about. So here comes a regular guy like me to an altar like this. You have someone like Stephen leading prayers. You don't know what basis he or any other person on the altar has favor with God. You realize that you've been praying a particular prayer point. Your strength is too small to push it. You can't get answers. You've been praying this prayer point for three years. <laughs> what begins to happen is when you begin to join in that prayer, incense begins to rise up from the altar. It is not separated. It is mingled together. The incense from each person's heart begins to rise towards heaven. And when that begins to happen, if by chance your incense is mixed in with somebody that has favor with God on the basis of something, who knows? This is how we begin to see that your prayers, it gets moved from a three-year delay to six months or something like that. This is what happens when we come together as brothers to pray. So don't take it for granted because you, you don't understand what's happened in the back end. There are things that are happening in the back end that you will not see and you will not know. It takes a person that can see in the spirit to tell you what's happening. So you can't just come on the altar and then stay muted and wait for the next agenda. No, you will be doing yourself a huge disservice. I'm going to give us one minute to just pray. 
before God's presence. Or give us one minute to just do that, to tarry before God's presence. And um, I hope you can join in the procession. Those that are waiting on God and praying before God. You see, when you begin to pray like that, your your heart huh, is full of the issues of life that you're thinking about. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Every concern you are carrying, every ambition, everything that you're thinking about, when you open your mouth to speak, your tongues, what is inside the incense of your tongues is all of those things. So when it begins to rise up like that, you give yourself a chance to be heard quicker, faster by heaven. And we try. Guys, in one minute, unmute and begin to blast in the spirit and begin to thank God. Just blast in tongues. And begin to thank God and begin to praise his name. Just pray, pray, pray in the spirit. La vita di bracasi di brada da 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 la mamre che dele che disco i di agua da casa e prede di 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 in jesus name we pray amen father we thank you once again let our prayers come before your presence that we receive favor from god thank you father as we look into your word open our understanding lord in jesus precious name we pray amen amen amen, amen. welcome again everybody i see my friend's name and favor bless you bless you bless you you are welcome thanks for joining us today it's been a long time um we're going to try to move very very fast so that we can cover some ground we're also streaming on youtube so you can catch the link someone can grab it and put it on the chat really appreciate it you can post it on your whatsapp status and we can um, um just uh move fast so that we can cover some ground all right the restoration of lost time victor are you ready with scriptures a very serious topic you see when we yes, talk about restoration in the general context this topic is what most people refer to this is the topic that most people refer to at the tribe of marketplace ministers we've agreed that we're going to dissect what it means for God to restore us. And separating these topics and isolating them helps us take a closer, keen look into what we are talking about in the different segments of restoration that we may need to be restored in as God's children. 
when you are a child of God all hope is not lost you can you can get hope or get help rather from a different source yes you really can you really can you really can you see um okay the new testament has two main concepts of time and they are represented by two main greek words the first greek word is chronos the second greek word is kairos chronos is about sequential time the clock calendar the weekend when you say your weekend plans all of that that is what chronos relates to I need that scripture, Victoria. On the other hand, there is something called Kairos. The Kairos time. Okay. Kairos, on the other hand, is about the right season or the right occasion. The right season. The right occasion. For instance, we can say that Jesus came into the world at the Kairos time. He came at a time in the world that the Roman army had conquered Jerusalem and they were actually crucifying people. If he had come when the Babylonian Empire was conquering Jerusalem or Israel, he wouldn't have been able to fulfill prophecy. That's because they, those guys did not crucify people. So, for everything the prophet had to had said about him to come to pass, um, he had to come at the time when that thing would be happening. And it was the Roman army or the Roman Empire that were the experts in crucifixion. So we can say that Jesus came into the world at the Kairos time. Kairos talks about a long-awaited hope coming into fruition. Please, I want you to listen and pay very special attention. When we talk about restoration of time, what we are talking about is the restoration of Kairos. The Kairos time. It's not Kronos per se. It's Kairos. The right season. The right occasion. The right time. How many of God's children in the world have certain things been stolen from them? The right season, the right occasion. I remember praying for a woman a couple of years ago now. This woman could not have a child for 10 years. For 10 years. One of the things she told me was that many of her friends had kids that were now going into high school. And when she said that, I could understand the pain. I've got a friend in the US, something similar went happened to me. For 15 years of their marriage, they could not have a child. 15 years. 15 years.
if you had to go based on his friends you'd realize that a lot of them now have kids that are in going into college or that are finishing high school around that time kairos talks about the right season or the right occasion for a thing to happen So when the Apostle Paul says to us that see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise people, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Time here is redeeming the Kairos and that's because the days are evil. There is so much evil that has entered into the day. Oh my God. So much evil. The prince of this world, one of the things he does is he, he, he looks for occasion against God's people. But I've found that it's not just the fact that the days are evil, there are other reasons that create a reason why Kairos can be lost. Can be lost. But thank God he says that redeeming the time. That means restoring. Redeeming here is the Greek word. Exagorazo. And that word means to rescue from loss. In other words, to restore. So there is a hope of restoring time, restoring Kairos. You cannot necessarily restore Kronos. It's gone already. But Kairos, that's one you can restore. Now let's look at a few scriptures so that we understand what we are talking about fully. Can somebody on YouTube confirm that my audio is clear? My audio is clear. That would be great. Victoria, give me Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 8. I want us to now begin to look at what we have lost that needs to be restored. The Bible is saying here, to everything there is a season. There is a time for every purpose under heaven. Can I hear you guys say that with me? To everything there is a season. There is a time for every purpose under heaven. Can we say that? To everything. There is a time, a time for every purpose under heaven. Now, when some of these scriptures were written, um, some passages were transliterated in Hebrew, some in Greek. This one happened to be in Hebrew. Time here is, has a very funny pronunciation, it's E-T-H, F, in Hebrew. But in the Greek, it would be Kairos. To everything, there is a season. There is a Kairos for every purpose under heaven then the preacher begins to narrate what he's talking about he says that there is a time to be born and there is a time to die <laughs> a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted oh my god he says there is even a time to kill and there is a time to heal. 
Now, everything I'm reading here talks about God's sovereignty in time. It says that there is a time to break down and there is a time to build up. A time to, to weep. A time to laugh. If you laugh when people are weeping, you would understand that there truly is a Kairos time for everything. You will be the awkward person in the room. There is a time to mourn and there is a time to dance. There is a time to cast away stones and there is a time to gather stones. There is a time to embrace and there is a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Question. What is the purpose of time? What is the purpose of time? And I can take you back to Genesis, but I don't have that time. <laughs> I like that. I can take you back to Genesis, but I don't have that time. Okay, let's get serious. What is the purpose of time? My friends, time was created for God to accomplish his purpose in each generation. Can I hear us say that? Time was created for God to accomplish his purpose in each generation. Can we please say that? Time was created for God to accomplish his purpose in each generation. This is very important. Give me Isaiah 46 verse 10. You see, God does not live in time. He lives in eternity, a timeless realm. This time we're talking about primarily pertains to you and I. God too had need of time when his son was coming into the world. But primarily, it, it, it is for you and I. Look at what it says here. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. In other words, I will do all my purposes. All what I propose to do, I will do it. Time was created for God to accomplish his pleasure or his purpose in each generation. That's why it was created. That's why the night and the morning were the sixth, fourth day, sixth day, all those things. Now go back to Ecclesiastes 3. Let's look at that first verse again. Scroll up, my dear. Scroll up. Look at what it says. To everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. The reason time exists is to define the boundaries for the purpose of everything to be done under heaven. This means every purpose has its time. It has its time. Every purpose has its time. Am I communicating? Time exists to define the boundaries for the purpose of everything to be done 
under heaven. That means that every purpose simply has its time. If it is God's pleasure, then it has an insertion into time. And that's why Paul is advising us in Ephesians 5.16 to redeem the time because the days are evil. To redeem the time to redeem the time. Let me tell you the truth. The, the responsibility of restoration of time falls largely on man. It is 90% man's prerogative. It is 10% God's obligation. Man has to come the full circle, 90%. When he has done that, then God begins to do what he does. You see, this scripture is very interesting because he lists the purposes in every generation. He says that a time for every purpose under heaven. Then he begins to give us different things. A time to be born, a time to die. This is God's calendar he's giving us. How God ordained things on the earth. What the devil does is that he comes to rearrange it. He tries to move things around. Oh my God. That's what he does. He says there is a time to be born. There is a time to die. There is a time to plant. A time to pluck what is planted. You know, as young boys, we would we would we would, we would uh, sow beans and maize, and a time will come that that thing will grow all the way. When it grows all the way, we go harvest it. If you miss the Kairos season to harvest it, that thing will begin to rot on that tree. There's a Kairos. But I want to show you why we are talking about the restoration of lost time. And I will now help you understand how lost time can be restored according to God's system, according to God's timing, God's ordination, everything. Now give me that scripture in Joel 2, 25 to 27. Joel chapter number 2, 25 to 27. Now remember I was telling you that the restoration of time pertains to man and to God. Apostle Paul commands us to redeem the time. So man has an obligation. Here we are seeing the prophet Joel speaking on behalf of God, where he says, I will restore. God is saying that he himself will be the one to restore. So whose obligation is it? Is it man or God? It is 90% man's prerogative. It is 10% God's obligation. I'm telling you again. Now, this is the very popular scripture that we know about in our churches when we talk about restoration. The truth is that restoration pertains to different areas of your life, different areas. And the restoration of time, what we are treating this month, is very, very important. It is the foundation to everything. Until time is restored, the Kairos season for you is restored. Marriage can't even be restored. Family can't be restored. Health can't be restored. 
keep that in mind so now before we get to this story you must understand what had happened that this prophet was prophesying and the reason why this story strikes me is because it is no not different from the story of God's people today in this day and time the Israelites were very very interesting people to study they would see the display of God's mighty hand they would see how God would come and save them and deliver them right from the time he brought them out of Egypt and they would still backslide they would go back they would begin to worship foreign gods foreign deities they will start doing stuff like that they will fall into sin or begin to speak against God they will be doing silly things like that and what God did was that he he, he decided to teach them a lesson because God wouldn't be disrespected that way you know so God will, will let their enemies capture them enslave them and take them into captivity this kept happening in different cycles in fact there are four main um, people that captured them that we're going to look at briefly because it pertains to this topic, the restoration of lost time. And their story is no different from this day and time. That's why you cannot ignore the Old Testament. No, you can't. It's a lie. The Bible says that we are God's Israel. In the New Testament if we are God's Israel we have to learn from these people that were the original Israel where they did it wrong and God will begin to raise prophets and send prophets to go speak to them and warn them and they would end up killing the prophets or doing something with them now here comes prophet Joel and he he begins to prophesy a prophet is a person that speaks the words of God. He's speaking for God. He says, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. Now, look at what was said after that. I would think he would have said the great army. God said, my great army, he claimed them, which I sent amongst you. Very disturbing statement. The first reason why people need restoration of lost time is because of rebellion against God, against the laws of God. When you begin to rebel as a Christian, as a child of God, your story looks like the story of the Israelites. It's no different. It's no different. What happens is that there is a great army that can be sent. Oh, all right. Verse 26. It begins to continue that prophecy, Prophet Joel. What does it look like when God has restored those years, those times? Number one, you shall eat in plenty. You shall be satisfied. Number two, you shall praise the name of the Lord your God. Now, look at what he said next. The Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. Number three, my people shall never be put to shame. The reason why God restores the years, the Kairos, is because his people shall never be put to shame. Can I hear us say that? The reason why God restores the years is because his people cannot be put to shame. Can we say that? Oh my God. 
you know, many years ago, many, many years ago, I was new in the U.S. I joined a church and I was playing drums for them. One particular Sunday after service, this man that we all knew to be a stand-up guy, him and his wife had a confrontation and he decided to beat his wife in front of everybody in church. As we speak, the marriage has crashed, unfortunately. But I can't forget that day in my life. It made me wonder why would a man want to put his wife to shame publicly like this? The reason why I'm giving you this story is because it's the same scenario with God. God does not want to put his bride to shame. He can deal with you internally, yeah? And he will release the crawling low cost, the consuming low cost, the chewing low cost, all of those things. But at the end of the day, you must understand that God does not intend to put his people to shame. Verse 27 says, Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. Then he repeats the exact same statement. My people shall never be put to shame. Now, I want you to hear me very carefully. The appropriate response to the restoration of time is to praise the name of the Lord God publicly. That's in verse 26. Why are you praising him? Because he has dealt wondrously with you. Oh my God. He has dealt wondrously with you. It was last month that we had a theme picked by our sister ministry, King Zaru, called the Father of Spirits. And I had the privilege of teaching the last day and I told them, it is whom the Lord loves that he chastises. In fact, the proof that God has accepted you into his family is that he will chastise you. He would he will deal wondrously with you. He will chastise you. When God's people begin to pursue other things, have all kinds of deities, things that capture their heart, what we look like is like a woman stepping outside on her husband. That's the exact way it looks like. Then God releases a dealing because he is the father of spirits, the giver of life. And then when he wants to make things rise right with you, what he says is, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Now, don't forget that I began to tell you that it is 90% man's prerogative. It is 10% God's obligation. Man has a duty to do, something to do, and then God can restore to you the years that the swarming locust had eaten. You are like Israel that has not repented from what they have done against God. Why he delivered them to his great army. And then you're asking God to restore to you the years. Now, there is something that happened before we got to this scripture. Go to Joel chapter number 1, verse 2 to 4. Joel 1, 2 to 4. Let's see the backdrop of this story. Hear this, you elders, and give ear all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days? Or even in the days of your fathers? He says, tell your children about it. 
tell your children to tell their children and their children another generation i began by telling you that there is a purpose for time time was created for god to accomplish his purpose in each generation in every generation god has something he wants to accomplish we're seeing it in verse 3 he says tell your children about it let your children tell their children and their children yet another generation now we say something very interesting it says what the chewing locust left the swarming locust has eaten what the swarming locust left the crawling locust has eaten what the crawling locust left a consuming locust has eaten it was in Joel 2 that he called them my great army those locusts that he's talking about they accomplished God's purposes even within that generation if you're with me can I say a thumbs up so I don't lose you guys if you're with me can I say a thumbs up if we are still together okay one person is good very important now in this scripture there are four unique words used for locust now the classic king james calls it palmer worm canker worm caterpillar locust these are the words used let me let me help you understand the chewing locust by king james is called the palmer worm that's what you may be familiar with the swarming locust is referred to as the locust generally by king james the crawling locust is called the canker worm the consuming locust is called the caterpillar <laughs> oh my god so there are four words for locust used in this verse now help me let me help you understand it is one kind of locust but they are in various stages of growth it's one kind of locust but they are in various stages and you must understand that the word locust here is a metaphor the four stages of this locust are used to depict the nations that devastated Israel in four consecutive empires please you must understand what I'm saying today This is talking about the locust that devastated the nation of Israel in four different empires. And this history is important because you, you need to now know how this thing works in this day and time by looking at their history, Israel. Number one was the Babylonian Empire. They are the ones that were being referred to as the chewing locust. Number two was the kingdom of the Medes and Persians. They are the ones that came after Babylon and took over and they are referred to as the swarming locust. Number three was the ancient nation of Greece. They also conquered Israel I want at a, at a point in time in history they are referred to as the crawling locust number four was Rome Roman army they are the consuming locust the consuming locust includes the Antichrist is described as the last Caesar of the Roman Empire so these armies were called locusts because they were just like locusts. There were so many of them. So many of them. But Prophet Joel refers to them as God's great army, which is very disturbing. God had control all through the time over what was happening. For whom the Lord loves, he chastises. 
God won't watch you go into idolatry and not release a dealing in your life. That's what happened with the Israelites. When they begin to worship Baal and all these other gods, God will release a dealing in their lives. Maybe the Babylonian Empire will come and conquer them. Or Greece will come and conquer them. Or Rome will come and... Something like that was happening. And they would move them away from the promised land, move them to their own land and make them slaves. They will kill some and make the rest slaves. Now, these four armies are the direct corresponding effect of the statutes Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. Keep that in mind. These armies came to devastate and consume Israel totally. That's why they were released. They devote the people, they devote the land, they devote the fields and their produce, they devote their food and drink, they cut off their joy and gladness. It was torn to weeping. Talk about a, a, a steal, kill, and destroy mission. That's why they came. But the Bible says Christ came to give life and to give it more abundantly. Now, give me that story, Daniel 2, 31 to 35. Let me reference this story so that you see how this low cost operated. You must understand how this thing works. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, calls Daniel to come interpret his dream and all of that. It says, you, O king, were watching and behold a great image. This great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. And you watched. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands. And this stone struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together. And they became like chaff from the summer threshing floor. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and it filled the whole earth. Let me just tell you now, Christ, is the secret. Christ is the mystery <laughs> to the restoration of time, of lost time. Let's look at how Daniel interpreted this scripture. Give me verse 44 to 45. It's a long story. I don't want to read the whole thing so that we can save time. It's a long story, but I'll just skip that. Verse 44 to 45. Quickly, quickly. The Bible says, And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, silver, and gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. This dream is certain. Its interpretation is sure. Listen to me very carefully. Hi. I wish I could I could show you the image of what Nebuchadnezzar saw as an image. Okay, um, Victoria, can you try? Open Google and um, I want you to open and type in um, Daniel two 
32. Let's see if we can find an image for that. Go under images. If you would see an image, yes, yes, that one right underneath. Pick that, yeah, that one that is showing the man standing. Yeah, you can pick that one or pick the, no, no, pick, pick the one above it, above it, above it. Pick the one above it. Sorry, if you're on YouTube, we apologize. We're just trying to just make sure we can show something real quick. All of those things he saw corresponded to time. Very important. Uh oh, I can't see. Okay, here it goes. So, the gold head was Babylon. Okay. Then we went to the Middle Persia or Persian Empire that would conquer Israel as well. Then Greece was next, they would conquer Israel. Then Rome would conquer Israel. All of these happened in a particular time period. The time periods they happened in is what God is saying he would restore. Keep that in mind. But what happened was that they disobeyed God, they revolted against God, and God would allow their enemies to capture them. And when they capture them, they would lose time, years, years. It's a very extensive story. All of these things happened in a particular time period. All of them. Very important what I'm saying. All of them. If you're with me still, can I see your thumbs up? Please, I want you to, to understand, to understand. Very important. Now, this story is not different from what's happening in our lives these days and time. Just now, the issue is that it is not a physical army from Rome coming to conquer us. These things you spoke about, the chewing low cost, the swarming low cost, the crawling low cost, the consuming low cost, in the life of a Christian, of a child of God, these are demons. But the exact thing they achieved over Israel back then is what they are achieving over this, this, this day and time Christians. That's why it is a two-way thing. Compliance and alignment with God, then God begins to restore lost time. God does not restore lost time before repentance. He doesn't do that. That lesson must be learned. But it is to the end goal that God's people will not be put to shame. You will not be put to shame. Whom the Lord loves, he chastises. It's a very prophetic scripture. They devoured the people. They devoured their land, broke down their temple. Listen, these guys were horrible. When I went to, when I went to Jerusalem, um, two, two years ago, I believe, I had a chance to see what was left of the ruins of Solomon's um, temple. That great temple he built. The only thing that they left, oh my goodness, when the Roman Empire ravaged that entire place, what was left was the only wall that was facing the Holy of Holies. They totally destroyed everywhere. They destroyed it. That's why it says, what the chewing locust left, 
the swarming locust consume. So God is saying, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the years the crawling locust has eaten, the consuming locust has eaten, and the chewing locust has eaten the great army which he sent amongst them. I told somebody once that even demons do God's bidding. They are the enemies of Christ, don't get me wrong. But sometimes God would allow certain things to happen because he's bringing a chastisement into a person's life. He's bringing a chastisement, a correction. And the appropriate response is to align with God. The sooner you align, the quicker you can come to the end of that season. Repent first, then align. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not giving you a message that makes you jump and rejoice. These are truths. All right. So in this day and time, we have become God's Israel. And when you begin to rebel against God by sin, iniquity or transgression, idolatry, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, hatred, contentions, jealousies, drunkenness, works of the flesh, we by ourselves program ourselves outside of God's laws and protection. Those locusts came because of disobedience and sometimes because of pride. In our context, what is required is to apply the blood of Jesus on the lintels of our front door. After you repent, after you align, you apply the blood. Now, let's look at some solutions to restoration of lost time because God follows the same process as he did with the Israelites you must understand that give me 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1 to 2 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1 to 2 Apostle Paul says, we then as workers together with him, we plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For God says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day now is the day of salvation i want you to hear me very well the first remedy in the restoration of lost time is repentance and salvation unto eternity a person cannot experience restoration of time unless they give their life to god you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior because tomorrow may be too late. It's not promised. If you are under the rulership of the swarming locust, the chewing locust, (laughs) tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow may be too late. And so Paul says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, In the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now, now, now. Not tomorrow, it's now. Now is the day of salvation. There is a day of salvation for every single person on this altar. There's a day of salvation. The day when your sins confront you. When the sin of witchcraft confronts you, 
and you are broken and you are sorry for what you've done in the last few years you are sorry for the rebellion against god because the day of salvation happens in a kairos season a time will open up to you that god's saving arm and grace will be coming towards you his arms are, are wide open like a like a father waiting to hug a child like a husband waiting to hug a, a wife but that day of salvation is not guaranteed forever a judgment can strike oh my god a judgment can strike i will take the person out the next day take them out next week next month it says now is the accepted time now is the day of salvation if you're listening to me today allow me to echo the words of the apostle paul <laughs> now now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation you accept christ as your genuine lord and savior because tomorrow may be too late So that's where you start the journey of restoration of time with God. You must make peace with God first. You must accept his son that he sent into the world. Otherwise, you are on your own on the outside. Number two, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, 11 to 21. Ephesians 5 verse 11 to 21 Ephesians 5 let's see what leads to restoration the restoration of lost time Paul begins to give us candid advice he says have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them some say reprove them have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret oh my god there are things that i did as a um a silly guy huh and when i think back I feel ashamed for myself. I feel ashamed. I repent all over again. I say, God, please have mercy on me. Have mercy. Oh my God, have mercy. He says, it is a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Oh my God. all things that are exposed it says they are made manifest they are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light light is that which makes manifest <laughs> i used to hear apostle Larry say that thing light is that which makes manifest until i had the experience the encounter of it it's not for today. I have an interest. You just give a very straightforward, sober message. <laughs> it says, Light is that which makes manifest. It is that which makes manifest. Whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Oh my God. The giver of light is Christ. Oh, can somebody say that with me? The giver of light is Christ. He is the giver of light. Can I hear somebody the say that? The, the giver of light is Christ. Oh, the giver of light is Christ. 
Oh my God. The giver of light is Christ. So he now says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Light is that which makes manifest. This light that you would receive, it, it has a way of waking you up from sleep, from being dead in sins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is in his light that you see light. It is in his light. You see, you need light to walk circumspectly and not waste your own time. Can I tell you that a key issue that we all have is the issue of not having light or enough light. Not having light. If I'm meant to go into a dark room to fetch something, because the Kairos time has come for it, and I don't have any light, and I walk into that dark room, and I'm trying to navigate my way to get that thing, I would take more time to get it. Maybe it's in a corner of the room, and it is now, I'm on the other end of the room because I'm looking for it on the other side of the room. I don't have light, but the second light is on in that room. I can walk circumspectly directly to go and fetch that thing, retrieve it and come back out of the door. Many of us don't have light. This man says all things are exposed, they are made manifest by the light, but whatever makes manifest is light. If you're going to redeem the time because the days are evil, Light is a, a solution. Light. Light. Light is what you need from God. Light from God's word. Light. The entrance of your word give it light. You know, I spoke to someone today and the person is trying to make a decision and I can understand because you need light to make that decision. Light. If a Kairos season has come in a person's life, such as the time for marriage, or the time to give birth, and if you don't have light, you can be like me, stepping into a dark room, and I'll waste more time because I don't have light. But the second light hits your mind. Oh my God. The second light hits you. You will just realize that I'm wasting my time here. I'm, what, am I, what am I still doing here? Something would happen to you. Oh. Light. And that light is coming to help you walk in the will of the Lord. But don't forget, before you get here, you have repented. You have aligned with God. You've aligned with God. That is the 90% that you have to do. Then God begins to help you. He says, I will restore the years. It is his job to come full circle and restore. It's not your job. You can't do anything about it. He's the one that created time. 
He's the one that has the monopoly on time. It is his job to restore. I will restore. And how he begins to restore is Christ will give you light. But that light he's giving you is to walk in the will of God for your life. To walk in the will of God. To know what city to relocate into. To save yourself the headache of doing it 10 years from now. Oh my God. The headache of not marrying the person that will beat you in the next 10 years. The next five years. Or that will step out on the marriage. That will become a headache. It's done by light. Light is that which makes manifest. Understand what the will of the Lord is. That's the point that this light is coming for you. For. When that light shines on you, it is to make known the will of the Lord. Oh. I'm seeing in the spirit there are three people listening to me today. God says to tell you that he's been trying to reach to you with his light. But your ears have been dull of hearing. You've not been able to hear him. As I speak, something is being removed from your ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that in the spirit. A restoration to be able to hear what the will of God is for you. That's how God saves you, Kairos time. So that you can walk in the purpose he has under heaven. Number three. James 4, 13 to 15. James 4, 13 to 15. James 4, 13 to 15. Understand and align your life with the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to reiterate that same thing. You have to align your life with the will. Listen, it is the will of God that restores time. Walking in the will of God. God's will. You have to come to a place where you are so satisfied to not make a decision unless God has spoken no matter what anybody says you are not racing against Kronos you are racing against Kairos there are two different things you can look at the physical biological time chronological time you can look at that that's Kronos no, no, no. In God's calendar, he's concerned about Kairos. The opportune time, the season for a thing. When it has opened. Okay. Come now, he will say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city. Spend a year there. Buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. He says, instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or do that. We shall live. If the Lord wills. Align your life with the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do you access that will, my friends? Anybody remembers? I just went over it. How do you access that will? How do you access that will? Through the light. Oh I'm sorry? <laughs> light. 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 Light light the bible says light is that which makes manifest the main purpose of light 
is to shed on your pathway to reveal the will of God for you. The will of God. And once you know God's will, you begin to run towards it. Begin to run towards it. Don't race in the opposite direction of God's will. Race towards God's will. That is the lane he has carved out for you. Oh my God. You see, God does not live in time. You and I are the ones that live in time. The canker worm and caterpillar, all those things, they don't affect God, they affect you. If your journey is crooked because you have deviated from God's will, oh my God, those things can eat up your time, it's true. But God will not let his people be ashamed. That's not what his plan. His plan is to discipline you enough to get back in alignment. And once you are back in alignment, then God is willing to shed light on your pathway. How does light come? The entrance of his word giveth light. You can begin to rearrange your priorities. You begin to seek God, not seek things. Two sisters get married. One of them gets married seven years after the first sister gets married. The one that gets married late is determined to seek the will of God because she understands this is the way you redeem the time. Because the days are evil. There is so much evil floating around the days. Inside a capsule called time, a 24-hour period, a day, there is so much evil around the whole place. The first sister that gets married has a child in 12 months and has yet another child in two years. Her life is set. Her life is set. But on the other corner, you have one of them that sat down to seek the will of God. She was in alignment with God and light was shed on her way, on her pathway. And because light was shed, she was able to make the choice that God wanted her to make, the right choice. The perfect will of God for her life. She was in God's purpose, God's will. Zoe life, she was living the reality of Zoe life. Heaven's purpose and intent for her life, which guarantees that Kairos is aligned with you, she was inside of it. Fast forward to year seven, the first sister realizes that the guy she gets married to is a wife beater and he sleeps outside the house and has severe severe issues of sin that we won't talk about all kinds of things go back to year eight she has to go through a separation and eventually file a divorce now here comes the second sister coming slowly but steadily slowly but steadily because she has locked in God's will for her life she begins to live her life 
and the peace of God that passes human understanding, that peace begins to flood her soul. Her children are around her table like olive trees, olive gardens. Her husband arises to call her blessed. They continue slowly but steadily. They go past the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh year. And their life is smooth sailing. This is the wisdom of God. That's why you hear certain men of God say, we run in this kingdom by waiting. We don't run by running. We run by waiting. Oh my God. They run by wisdom. The wisdom of God supersedes everything because trapped in his will, his wisdom is there. His wisdom is there. When I was in school, finishing school, Before we finished school, we were doing all kinds of work, all kinds of jobs on campus. I was working three jobs at one time. And there were these young boys who were all in school together. In fact, I used to help them with their exams and tests and all kinds of stuff. And these guys began to get into Yahoo. Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo stuff. In fact, I remember my very close friend began to work at a hotel. At some point, one of them came to him and said, can you give us credit card numbers of people that, um, that are checking into the hotel who will pay you $2,000 a week. Now I'm talking about college students. For us, getting a job worth $10 per hour was really good. 10 bucks per hour. <laughs> we'll be very happy. These guys were living the best of lives. They were wearing the best clothes, driving the fanciest of cars. All of those things. But we kept to who we were as young kids, young guys. We kept to the fear of the Lord. We kept walking the will of the Lord. Do you know that as I speak, all of those guys are in jail? All of them. All of them. They are in jail. In this kingdom, it is true that we run by waiting. In every facet of life, I don't care what it is. There is a Kairos time, an opportune time that God has destined for his people. You get into that Kairos by the will of God. And the will of God, you get it by light. Because light is that which makes manifest, inclusive of God's will. It makes God's will manifest in your life. If the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or do that. Give me Psalm number one, verse one to three. Psalm number one, verse one to three. The Bible says in that scripture, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But that man's delight, it happens to be trapped in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He says, that man shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water 
that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. I thought you were talking about a tree. It shall be like a tree. But now we are being shown that he, whatever he does, shall prosper. So men are likened to trees in God's word. Each time you see a tree, think of a man. <laughs> oh my God. But what I want to point out here is that there is another person that you can also model your life after. It's called a portrait of a blessed man. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, if I was going to summarize that statement, I would say planted by the will of God that brings forth its fruit in its season. Kairos is what we are talking about when we talk about the restoration of lost time. Lost seasons. How does God restore lost seasons? When a man begins to highlight and be like the portrait of a blessed man. You will be like a person that, you are like a tree, a mango tree, bringing, bringing forth mangoes in your season. There are seasons of life. There are seasons of life. Those seasons of life, you won't miss them by. You won't miss them. You won't miss them. So the other day, my my friend sent me pictures of my goddaughter graduating. Last month, my daughter graduated. It's a season of life. We are at a season where we are enjoying our daughters graduating from, 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 you know, elementary, all of those things. It's a season of life. There is a season whereby everybody's finishing college. You won't be left out. There is a season where everybody's getting married. You won't be left out. There is a season where everybody's dedicating their child. You won't be left out. These are seasons of life. When God begins to restore a man, a woman, what he wants you to be is a man planted by the rivers of water. But for you to be able to get into that portrait, verse number one and verse number two are the criteria. You must walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. You must stand not in the pathway of sinners. And you must sit not in the seat of the scornful. Make your delight the law of the Lord. And in his law begin to meditate day and night then you can challenge God to his word. That did you not say that this kind of a man will be like a tree planted? Oh my God. Planted by the rivers of water. The other day I was sitting down and um, a, um, it was a business meeting and they were making fun of um, someone that I know. And I refuse to laugh. Listen, when you understand how God's word works, you won't play with it. Your joke may be funny to you. It's not funny to me. Because I don't have the time to sit in the seat of the scornful Lord. I can't do that. I'm trying to align with verse number one and verse number two. Don't come and bring your stupid joke and, and disalign me. No, 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 no. It's too expensive. I can't afford it. I'm too busy trying not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I will not stand in the pathway of sinners and I will not sit in the seat of his comfort. My delight is in the law of the Lord, the law of my God. In his law, I meditate day and night. And so I expect to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will be bringing forth your fruit in your season. Your leaf shall not wither. Whatever you do shall prosper. Give me Acts number 1, 6 to 8, because I bring this to a close quickly. Acts 1, 6 to 8. Let's begin a round up. 
Let's begin the round up. When they had come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Will you at this time restore lost time to Damala? Will you at this time restore lost time to Victoria? Will you at this time restore lost time to a berry. What was the answer Jesus gave them? It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power. How is this a response to would you restore the kingdom to Israel? It says, don't be concerned with those things, oh. You, what you should be concerned with is what I'm telling you now. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. My friends, there is a, a dimension of power that makes you a person God can use to restore other people into their Cairo season. It exists. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then you will be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Go for power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Go for that. Go for that. Go for that. Go for that. That power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Yeah, yeah. It makes you a witness, an effective witness to the ends of the earth, an effective witness. You can come and disallow the authority of witchcraft over somebody's life. You shut it down for good. Let me round up with Job 33, 21, 26. Amy touched on this very lightly um, when she was speaking last week. Give me that scripture, Victoria. Job 33, 21 to 26. Job 33, 21 to 26. Oh, wow. Orlando Seville, you're welcome. God bless you. Now, this is a very, very interesting scripture, but we'll just summarize it. The Bible says his flesh is consumed away, it cannot be seen. His bones that were not seen begin to stick out. His soul draws near unto the grave, his life to the destroyer. But if there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one amongst a thousand to show unto man his uprightness, then God is gracious to him and says, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's flesh. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and God will be favorable to him. He shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. That word, render unto man his righteousness, means what he has lost, what he has lost, what is rightfully his in God's kingdom. There is something called the ministry of interpreters. Yeah, a person that sees in the spirit can interpret the signs that God is giving you so that you can be redeemed. That ministry exists. A messenger and interpreter sent to someone, one amongst a thousand to show unto man his uprightness. Interpreters come in different ways, in different lights. They come in different ways. An interpreter can come to point you in the right direction or to reveal God's will, God's plan for you. A person can function by prophecy and they have stepped into their ordination as an interpreter for your life. I can't forget when 
um, my wife and I met someone in Nigeria and this person focused on my wife and began to give interpretation to her life. That interpretation helped her begin to walk in the kairos of God for her life. That is what interpreters do. That's what they do. They come to save you time so that you can redeem time and you can catch up and overtake. Let me stop here for today. We've gone over time. Guys, let us pray. I want to pray a simple prayer. There's someone I've been seeing in the spirit. And I hope you hear me. I hope you hear me. God is reaching out his hands to you. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day. Today. It's called a day of salvation for you. It's not for anybody else on this altar. It is specifically for you. As I take this prayer now, if you would confess openly and really, really repent before God, and come in alignment with God, light will be shed in your direction. Light will be shed. But if you don't, God's judgment is looming. It's looming over you. I'm appealing to you. Father, I've delivered the word you told me to deliver. You said you will restore the years if your people repent and come in alignment with you. Lord, I ask that this repentance that we are bringing before you, that it be genuine and that you receive of our heart. away your wrath and your judgment from your people. Let there be restoration of lost Kairos. Let your mercy fall. Yeah. If anybody here is giving their life to Christ, Lord, I ask that your mercy will overtake judgment. A genuine repentance. A genuine repentance. Oh my God. Oh my God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you would reach out to the lost sheep. It is not your plan that anybody be put to shame. It is your plan to discipline us and to uphold us. Thank you. I ask that for as many as are hungry and thirsty for light, let light be shared in their way to reveal your will for their lives, to walk in your will, to walk in your will for their lives. The locusts may not be the Babylonian Empire in this day and time. It may not be the Middle Persian Empire the Greek Empire or the Roman Empire. In this day and time, they have taken the shape of demons that buffet your people's lives. And so, Father, I ask that you will restore to them as many as are repentant and want to align with you, restore to them the years that have been stolen. Plant them in the epicenter of your will for their lives that the Son of God may be glorified over them. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. 
In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Victoria, over to you. Any announcements? Let's take them. Hi, thank you very much, sir. God bless you, sir. Uh, everyone, let's appreciate Mr. Damola for that great time of teaching. You know, earlier today when he mentioned how tired he was, I told him I was scared because it's when he's tired that it takes the most time to teach. But if you heard the way he spoke, you would know he needed some rest. But like the Bible said, and he quoted it when I mentioned that, I uh, said, in my weakness, are you made strong? And so God is always making himself strong when Mr. Damola is weak. And so let's appreciate him for always allowing the word of God to come out mightily through him. Thank, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you and we love you. Thank you for all that you do uh, in the body of, of Christ. Just to make sure that a whole bunch of us come out from darkness into the marvelous light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you again, sir. And you will not miss heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. Uh, the announcements we have on Thursday, we have 10 hours prayer marathon. For the ladies, we have a mount up session during the prayer marathon. And so don't miss on Thursday. On Friday, we have um, Faith and Works Clinic. Don't also miss that. And just to bring to our, uh, to remind us, we are having our anniversary, planning for the anniversary in September. And so let's continue to keep it there. All right, Pharmacist Akudo, your hand is raised. Let me allow you to speak first. Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I just wanted to bring to our notice for the Thursday marathon, actually. It's going to be, we're still going to, we're going to have the teaching sections and the King's Area session. But from 7 a.m. Um, Nigerian time or from the beginning of the marathon, it's going to be mount up all through at the different slots. So I'll implore you not to miss it. The teaching sessions will still be there and the um, King's Eye session definitely. But I'll implore you just as if you join, if you usually join the King's Arrow mount up, you know how it is. So it's going to be like that from the beginning to the end. And we trust the Holy Spirit to do that which he wants to do in this um, 10 hours marathon, the restorations, the healings, the blessings and all that. He has instructed this for a reason. So please don't miss it. As many, as many of you that can unmute that day, it's not going to be a day where you come and you would be muted all through because we would just be expressing ourselves in the language of the Spirit. So that's just what I wanted to bring to our notice. The teaching sessions will still be there and King's Arrow, please, will still be there, but it will be taking a little bit of turn um, this Thursday. Victoria, over to you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pharmacy. So we are going to be building ourselves in our most holy faith, so don't miss it. We'll pray in the spirit and tremendous power will be made available. Uh, don't miss any of the activities be prepared uh get some savings aside to attend the anniversary in september and um we also have other activities that you ought to be a part of a part of uh like mr damola mentioned earlier you're encouraged to always unmute and pray the other thing is that we are a marketplace ministry we are not a church and that is not our setting our uh, major calling is to train and to release into the marketplace. And so um, when you come here, you identify your mandate. And if you have, please don't sit on it. Uh, follow the time, the planning of the Lord, and make sure that you go into the marketplace of industries and that you manifest, uh, manifest that mandate. Uh, so that God, you'd be an extension of someone that God is also using to call others out of darkness. So don't take in everything and not do anything about it. We are in marketplace ministry. Ours is to train you to become a marketplace minister. So you are trained, go out there and minister. And let's also always endeavor to read messages that are sent on the whatsapp group most of the information is being shared on that platform and so any other um 
any other updates we have it's going to be shared up on that platform god bless you all thank you if it's your first time of joining us into this meeting thank you for joining us we love you we appreciate you for finding time to join us and our regulars you know we love you an extra mile thank you for always being there when our virtual doors are opened do keep enjoying the rest of your week have a beautiful night's rest if jesus stars bye everyone